Ah, watercolor. The youngest of the three most popular painting siblings, and seemingly the least threatening, but in actuality, the most chaotic. Because watercolor is not actually painting, it's staining, which means at best, it's controlled chaos. Which can be fun, sometimes. Let's go over the basics of watercoloring. So you're going to need two cups of water. One cup is to clean off your brush, then after you've gotten all the pigment off, you use the clean water to add to your pigment. This will keep your colors vibrant and bright and keep them from getting muddied up. You're then going to need some type of paper towel or napkin to dry off your brush. Then you're obviously going to need brushes. Now it doesn't really matter which brush you use, however I like to use the synthetic brushes just because they're a little softer and the hard bristles of the animal hair brushes can damage the paper which is already weakened by the water. So I use the synthetic brushes. Then you're going to definitely want to get some watercolor paper. You don't want to use just regular, you know, average paper because the water's going to destroy it. I mean, the water even destroys this watercolor paper, um, but it holds up better than regular paper. And as for in paint, I'm going to use Windsor and Newton little color trays that have the, you know, little pigment cakes in them, um, just because I like to use them. It's easier for me to use. So there are three basic watercolor techniques. Now the first one is wet on wet, where you use a wet brush on top of a wet surface. So you're first gonna flood the paper with a lot of water, and I mean a lot. So much so that the water actually sits on top of the paper. Then you're gonna take your brush and put some pigment drops on it and just let the color spread. You've probably seen this a lot, you know, on Instagram, people like to do this and film it. Oh look, it's so amazing. But it's nice, it makes the color spread, and of course you can use your brush to spread the color even further, or you can add another color to make nice soft gradients. Now the second technique is called wet on damp, which is a wet brush on a damp surface. So like you see, I'm going to brush the surface of the paper with a light amount of water, only where I want the pigment to be. Then once I have that done, I'm going to take the pigment just like before and kind of dab it on. And you'll notice it's spreading like the other one, but it obviously doesn't spread as far. That's just because there's less water. So you're going to use your brush to kind of push the pigment and color around. With this technique, when it dries, it's going to be the lightest of all the three techniques. And the third technique is wet on dry, where you take a wet brush on dry paper. As you can see with this technique, you're going to get the you know, most vibrant colors and the boldest lines really for detail. Um, but you're always going to want to come back with water and lighten up those lines or make gradients. Out of the three techniques, Techniques, I use this one the most. So those are the three basic techniques. As you can see here, the first two come out a lot duller than the other one. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, as you're using these techniques when you paint. Now you're also going to want some type of board to actually tape your paper down to because as you start, you know, doing watercolor painting, um, the paper's going to start to rise or try to warp because of the water and you don't want that. So you always want to tape down all the edges of your paper and keep them taped down until your painting is completely dry. Now, I always work with an underdrawing, however, I never actually draw on the paper because you don't want a lot of lead on your paper. You want to keep it nice and clean. So I always do my drawing first on tracing paper and then transfer it over. If you need to know how to do this, um, I'll leave a link in the description to a previous video where I show you how to do this. So there we go, now it's on my paper. Now, I would never recommend doing a face for your first painting in anything. However, I decided to do a face to show you that even just using, you know, the three basic watercolor techniques, you can do something as complicated as a face. So, here we go. Let's get started. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with the background and I'm going to use the wet on wet technique where I put a lot of water on the background because I don't want it to be too vibrant. And then I'm going to go ahead and add my pigment all over and just kind of let it spread a little bit. I'm also going to add another color just to give it something to blend with to make it more interesting. Now a technique you can use, which I'll use a lot here throughout, um, is if you put too much pigment, like here I think I have too much pigment, I take a napkin and I'll actually dab away some of the pigment. And you can use this as even like a brush and sweep away things. So don't be afraid to, you know, take away stuff with the napkin. So first I'm going to start with her hair and to do this I'm going to use the wet on dry technique. So I'm going to do lines of just straight pigment first and then I'm going to come back later with water and kind of spread those out, you know, make nice gradients and such. And I'm going to do this all over her hair. And you'll notice her hair is going to be much darker than this but with watercolor you always want to paint light to dark. That's the rule. Always paint light to dark first. So I'm always going to start with my lightest color that I want and then I'm going to come back later and add the darker colors. So once I'm done with the first layer, I'm gonna go ahead and come back with another layer of darker yellow. I'm gonna use yellow ochre this time. And I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna start with, you know, wet to dry, and I'm gonna put lines, and then I'm gonna come back with water and kind of smooth out the color a little bit. Not as much as I did the first layer because I still want those highlights of the lighter yellow to come through. 
Now I'm gonna go ahead and do this throughout her whole hair just like I did the first layer. And so this is what it looks like so far. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do another layer on her hair. This is gonna be my darkest layer. I'm actually gonna use a burnt umber. Um, but I'm gonna do the same exact thing, wet to dry. I'm gonna start with you know thick lines, then I'm gonna come back and kind of water them out, uh, you know, pushing that color, making it a little bit softer. Um, but however, I'm gonna do that the least amount on this last layer because I still want some of those nice, you know, well-defined lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this throughout her whole hair, adding, you know, shadow or lines or whatever. And this is what it looks like, which looks fine for now. You can always add more, you know, layers later. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint her skin, which I want to be very light. So I'm actually gonna use the wet on damp technique because that's gonna get you your lightest amount of pigment. So skin is made up of two colors usually, yellow and red. So I'm gonna first come in with yellow because you usually use more yellow. And then I'm gonna put a tiny bit of red in there. And then I'm gonna dry my brush and come back and just push that color around. Every now and then I'll re-dry my brush so it just takes up a little bit more pigment. Um, just because I really want that skin tone to be very, very light and not too noticeable. Um, so that's what I'm going to do pretty much all over her face. You know, same exact technique. I'm going to do, you know, wet on damp. I'm going to paint her skin where I want the color to be. Come back with a lot of yellow and then just add a little bit of red and then just, you know, push that color around. I'm constantly drying my brush so I'm taking up pigment as I paint. I'm also going to use a napkin to take away some of the pigment to add highlights to her cheekbones. And then I'm going to use this technique for the rest of her skin on her forehead, on her neck, remembering that, you know, on her neck it's going to be a lot darker than the rest of her face, so you're just going to add a little bit more pigment, but same, you know, wet on damp technique. And there we go, looks pretty good so far. Now for everything in her eyes, I'm gonna use the wet on dry technique. So I'm gonna come in and put some blue around her eye, pretty thick, and then I'm gonna come back and add some yellow and some red just to add a little bit of flesh tone to it. And then I'm gonna come with water and just spread that color out. Cause even though I'm using a darker color, I'm still doing the same rule where you paint light to dark. So I'm gonna put on my you know lightest layer of blue before coming back and adding you know my darker blues. So I'm gonna come back, like I said, I'm gonna come back and add my darker blues around her eye. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just try to fade those in as much as possible. Not too much because I want her makeup to stand out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and paint the iris. Now I'm gonna use the same technique, dry on wet. I'm gonna come in with my lighter color just like I've been doing this whole time. So I'm gonna paint a lighter blue first and then I'm gonna come back and add a darker blue and then I'm gonna take some of that pigment away and then I'm just gonna come back and add a little bit darker blue and then again add water to push that color around making it a little bit softer. Now once I'm done with my iris, I'm gonna be really careful and use the black to paint in her pupil, keeping a little white dot for you know the reflection. I'm also gonna outline her eye in black, and then lastly, I'm gonna make eyelashes in black. Be very careful with black because it's hard to take out once you put it in. And then lastly, I'm gonna do her eyebrow, which again, I'm gonna use the wet on dry technique, first putting my lighter color, then coming back with a much darker color, and there you go. Also, don't forget to put a little bit of color on the other side, even though it's blocked by her hair, just put a little bit there. And last but not least, I'm gonna do her lips, which again, I'm gonna use the dry on wet technique. So I'm gonna outline, you know, where the darkest part of the color is gonna be, and then I'm gonna use water to fade that color in. Uh, I'm also gonna put yellow again, again, just to make it like a fleshy tone. And then I'm gonna come back with a much darker red to really make it more vibrant. Again, using the same wet on dry technique and then fading that color out. And there you go. Just make sure it's dried completely before you remove the tape. And you know, you're pretty much done. I know it's a simple face, but it's still a face, which is really hard to do. And as you saw, I only did it, you know, using those three basic watercolor techniques that I showed you in the beginning. And there you go, like I said, you know, there's those three simple techniques, but as you saw how I applied them in different areas, you know, made the whole painting come together. So, you know, there you go, that's how you can get started. I mean, I wouldn't recommend again doing a face, um, but you know, maybe start with something simple like fruit or birds, or if you really wanna do faces, I would recommend first doing animal faces because you can learn the same techniques to do, you know, portraits, but with an animal, it's a lot easier. Plus, you're gonna be a lot judgmental when you don't get it right the first couple of times. But watercolor, 
watercolor is really all about practicing and just learning how the paint moves across paper or different surfaces. So it's really just about practicing and experimenting. Like half the things I did for this portrait, I didn't even know were gonna work. I just tried it and they ended up working or I just made them work. So like I said, watercolor is really about controlling chaos. You have a certain amount of control, but not too much. You have to let the colors just do what they're gonna do. But for me, watercolor is still the best. Um, I like it out of the three painting styles. It's my favorite. So there you go. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. If you haven't already, check out my other channel, Beast Puff. And yeah, go try watercoloring. It is out of the three, even though it is controlled chaos, it is one of the more, you know, user friendly, whereas you don't need a bunch of stuff. And it looks really nice. And it's just fun to experiment. And you don't have to take it too seriously. So there you go. Go try it.